Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a quick video on embalming chemicals out in our everyday life, things you use, things you put on your body. Time out, before I head into a store and go get a product that I know has a formaldehyde chemical in it, I wanted to jump back and give you a little bit of information about formaldehyde. That is the number one chemical and thing that you guys press me on often is how can we embalm and bury bodies in the ground that have formaldehyde in them? It's poisoning everyone, right? Well, formaldehyde is a natural element that exists in the air around you right now from where you're watching. It's in your home, it's outdoors, it exists typically in 0.03 parts per million. Humans and most living organisms create formaldehyde as part of your process of living. You are naturally emitting formaldehyde right now where you are. In a home, formaldehyde levels are going to be highest if your home contains a smoker or any new construction. Tobacco smoke contains formaldehyde. So if you are a smoker or around secondhand smoke, you are exposed to formaldehyde all day, every day, in levels that are not safe. A lot of new construction um, products emit a form of formaldehyde. So if you bought anything recently, like put together, sometimes those put together um, furniture things that they have labels that say, this product may contain formaldehyde. We just had a little um, cabinet thing that we put together a couple weeks ago and had a label and it said, California law makes me tell you that this item may contain formaldehyde. So there's a lot of things out there that contain formaldehyde that you're just not aware of. So that's why we're gonna head into the store and I'm gonna find an item to show you that most likely contains formaldehyde but it's not gonna be listed as one of the little things on the label because by law it does not have to. As you're looking at labels when it comes to formaldehyde though, I wanna read you a little list of different items that formaldehyde may be listed on a product label by this name. Formalin, formic aldehyde, methanol, methyl aldehyde, methylene glycol, methylene oxide. So any of those names may show up on a label for an item in your home, in your bathroom, in your car. They may be containing formaldehyde. So let me show you one item I'm going to go find in the store that has some formaldehyde in it. Hey, so returned, I have my item that uh, containing formaldehyde, and I'm not going to say 120% this does. Because the problem is a lot of companies will not list formaldehyde as being an inclusion on the ingredient list. However, when you go to the store and you buy these wonderful things for your car that smell great and the ones for your house that smell so great, if you look on the back on the ingredient list, it says, where's the ingredient list? Is it on the front? Um, it says fragrances. So there are over a hundred chemicals that can be used by these companies as a fragrance additive that they can put in here. Aqua Springs is not a naturally occurring <laughs> fragrance in nature. So that fragrance has to be created using a culmination of a whole bunch of different chemicals. Formaldehyde is one of those chemicals. So when you have these going in your car, when you have your air freshener plugins in your house going, you are more than likely and potentially releasing formaldehyde out into your house. So my friend and buddy, Benjamin Schmidt, who is a teacher at Warsham College of Mortuary Science in Wheeling, Illinois, um, has gone out and found some embalming chemicals in the wild, as he says, which I think is awesome title for it. Um, so here are his adventures so far. Hi everybody. I'm in the salad dressing of aisle of Target, uh, looking for my embalming chemical that I can find it every day. And what I found was 
mayonnaise, all right? Mayonnaise contains EDTA, which as we know, is an anticoagulant. Well, since mayonnaise is also made up of a lot of protein, it's necessary to keep it from uh, coagulating because the last thing you would wanna do is uh, go into your um, mayonnaise jar and get a, a bunch of gummy mayonnaise out. So that's my embalming chemical that I find in my everyday life. Hi everybody, I'm in a tuxedo at the happiest place on earth, searching for embalming chemicals in the wild. And I found some in this pool behind me. Pool cleaning chemicals contain sodium carbonate. In embalming, we use sodium carbonate for uh, balancing pH in our fluids. And they do the same exact thing in the pool. Hi everybody, I'm in the car wash looking for embalming chemicals in the wild. And I found one in this soap. Of course, in embalming, we use soap to disinfect the surface of the body, but also certain types of soap can be added to the solution to act as a surfactant. Surfactants allow for our embalming chemicals to reach smaller apertures by breaking up water surface tension. And of course, in a car wash, it's used to shine up your will. So I sent a challenge to Ben as well on his next adventures. On a side note, Ben recently published the textbook, Creating Natural Form for restorative art and students to learn and grow their skills. Um, so kudos to Ben on that one. So I challenged Ben to go out and try and find embalming chemicals in a baby aisle and in a snack food aisle. So let's see what he found. Okay, Carrie, how about this one? I'm in the baby aisle searching for embalming chemicals in the wild and I found some in these diapers. These diapers contain cellulose. In embalming, we use cellulose in things like tissue builder and feature builder because when it comes into contact with moisture, it expands. In diapers, it acts as an absorbent material, the same as when it comes into contact with moisture. Hi, Carrie. How about this one? I'm in the snack aisle looking for embalming chemicals in the wild and I found one in these cherry snack cakes. These cherry sn snack cakes contain calcium carbonate. In embalming, we use calcium carbonate to balance our fluids as well as our uh, body to maintain a constant pH. However, in these cherry snack cakes, they are used as a color retainer, which gives it the nice red color of the cherry, but also in food, calcium carbonate is used as a calcium supplement in non-dairy items sometimes. So this is an embalming chemical in the wild that is actually kind of healthy, believe it or not. Big thank you to Ben Schmidt for sending me over some of his adventures in finding embalming chemicals out in the wild. I think it's great to educate yourself and to understand that things that we use in the prep room for embalming and preservation is already around you. You are already consuming and using these products in many, many, many of your homes, especially those of you who smoke. You are already exposing yourself even more greatly than anybody else to formaldehyde. So when you ask the question, how can you embalm? How can you preserve? And then have those bodies placed in the ground because isn't it poisoning all of us? Everyone is already exposing themselves to these chemicals. Post questions below, make sure to comment. Can't wait to hear the feedback on this video. As always, you don't know what you don't know. So keep educating yourself. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.